that would be like a 250 pound man taking 50, 60 units or something like that as far as you know, muscle weight to muscle weight goes. So I'm watching this documentary on Netflix the other night called Untold Hall of Shame, all about Victor Conti and the Balco lab scandal that took place back in the early 2000s that involved Major League Baseball. Now I knew Marion Jones was involved in this, but something that jumped out to me while watching the documentary was one of her drug schedules for the month of July at whatever time, whatever year this was. But these are all the different, I'll show you here, these are all the different competitions where she's going to be running. Rome, Lausanne, Lausanne, I don't know, Paris, Nice, Oslo, Stockholm. And you see these little notes next to it. Now, as they go through the documentary, they show different bits of evidence, such as this, where they show what these things mean and correspondence between people and so forth and so on. So according to the documentary, this is her drug schedule that was given to her by Victor Conti. That's their premise for the documentary. Now, what do these different things mean? Well, if you watch the documentary, it's pretty clear. G is growth hormone and we'll get into more evidence for that later. C is the clear, the designer steroid that was put together by Patrick Arnold and supplied to Victor Conti. And E, if I understand correctly, is epitestosterone, which is to make sure when they do the epitestosterone to testosterone ratio test, it looks like it's in balance, even if the levels are high, it won't trip that first alarm bell. So hence, the epitestosterone. So these are the three main, you know, drugs that they're using. Okay, so this is a list for Barry Bonds, kind of a receipt of services. And G, in quotes, just written in the same handwriting, one box off-season and two boxes on-season. Now let's go back to this box of serostim to get an idea. This box has seven vials. And if I understand correctly, each vial contains 18 international units. Now, back to Marion Jones's drug schedule. G equals 25 units. Does that seem strange to you? I mean, Marion Jones is not six foot five, 250 pounds. This is a small woman. I mean, an athletic, muscular woman, but not a huge person. 25 units seems pretty high, so that really caught my attention. And that's why I went in and did kind of a deep dive, like, well, are we sure this means growth hormone? Well, yeah, it's as sure as we can be. This is pretty clear. Uh, no pun intended. But we've got 15 units equals C. So I'm guessing this is probably uh, 15 milliliters or something like that. I don't know, but it's some kind of sublingual or oral dose that was worked out with that clear, I suppose. According to that, this letter, we'll see. So epitestosterone, growth hormone, and the clear. So these are the main players in this drug scandal. Some medical applications, they will give even children 18 units of growth hormone, but it's like a one and done thing or a now and again thing. But Maybe that's the technique here. We're gonna go every few days to avoid detection in case we're testing on this day or that day and growth hormones in and out of your system pretty quickly. So maybe that's, maybe that's the deal. Just load up, take a break, load up, take a break. Makes some sense. So while all this was going on, I had this little janky newsletter that I put out and uh, seemed like it mostly went to prisoners. But anyway, must've been entertaining for somebody. And I interviewed both Patrick Arnold and Milo Sarsa for the newsletter and my great journalistic skills. I had no idea any of this was going on behind the scenes. It never came up. Uh, I was just mostly interested in Patrick Arnold's theories and the fact that he brought like Andrew Stendione and stuff like that to the market. So I guess he had a pretty big part to play in, well, in this whole thing. I mean, without that, there's no undetectable steroid. There's no, you know, he's kind of the genius innovator between, behind a lot of this. And that said, these days, he's not very out in the open. And I started wondering about this after I watched the documentary. I thought, man, this is kind of the unsung hero or unsung villain, depending on your perspective. I don't give a crap what other people use. You know, I'm not a huge sports fan. So, you know, I suspect that given all the problems that he 
threw a wrench into the works with, with Andrastandione coming to the market, 1AD kicking off the entire pro-hormone supplement industry, and the subsequent legal loopholes that uh, sports supplements users would get around the law with, they had to start tamping that down for the next 10, 15 years. So my guess is he's probably laying pretty low because the government's probably sick of him. So he doesn't want to be, he doesn't want to wear out his uh, good luck, right? So he doesn't want to accidentally uh, find himself <clears throat> in a bad situation with our government, I would suspect. That said, you know, I think he's a brilliant guy and I would love to hear more from him. So if you're out there, Patrick, and you're watching or you've got something you want to share, I think YouTube would love to hear from you. Um, also, pretty interesting that Milos was involved in all this. Around that time, he was switching his, you know, he wanted his moniker to be Milos the Mind. I remember he requested that when we were doing our interview, just the, and I, that may sound kind of funny, but the truth is, is you have those kind of conversations. How do you want to be, you know, mentioned on here and stuff? And that was his branding. And I don't think there's anything wrong with it because he's had some pretty interesting theories when it comes to uh, insulin dosages and protocols and, you know, basically high volume training in order to drive that and, you know, continually clear out the insulin receptors and so forth. If, if I'm understanding his techniques correctly, which I am probably not on that, but very interesting, uh, 25 units. I would never thought. So I wonder what that would do on a body that small. I guess that would be like a 250 pound man taking 50, 60 units or something like that as far as you know, muscle weight to muscle weight goes. So just kind of a shockingly high amount of growth hormone